This is Echo3, and welcome back to our career mode discussion. Normally, I would highlight one of my mistakes at the beginning of the video. This time, however, I spent a lot of hours practicing and getting these missions correct, and so by the time I recorded, this was actually my first take. No screw-ups on the actual recording, so that was a lot of fun there. Let's pick up a couple giving aircraft a purpose contracts. We're going to make a glider, and we're going to make a plane that can get up to 35,000 meters. Matter of fact, we can do that with the same craft. All we have to do is eject the engines once we get up to 35,000 meters, and we'll have a glider. So that's really all we need. We'll just throw together a very simple little craft here, put the control surfaces on. I'm going to use these elevons on the outside to act as our roll control and then another set there to kind of act as um, flaps of sorts. They'll help with slowing down the craft as we come in for a landing. That's really their only purpose there. I, I like to use various control surfaces for that. Nothing, nothing too complex. For our future missions, I am looking forward to going to a new planet, landing on a new planet anyway, and going to EVE. We've already sent one probe there and Fortunately, I put relay antennas on that probe looking forward to future missions. Well, here is that future mission. We're going to look forward to sending a lander on EVE and we'll need to take advantage of a relay satellite around the planet. For this thing, I need to, for this particular craft, I need enough thrust to get this thing up to 35,000 meters. So that's what these Panthers are. And I'm going to put them in afterburner mode. So once we take off, I'm just going to point straight up, and that'll be enough to probably get us up close to 50,000 meters if I wanted to. We don't need to go that high. The contract's only for 30,000. The next contract after that, we have to go up to over 70,000 meters. That's really hard to do with just Panthers, so I'll probably have to unlock something like the Whiplash engines before I get the next contracts for those. We'll put Jeb, this is a pretty much a crazy stunt here, so Jeb, go ahead, have fun. Glide this stratospheric plane back down to the runway. Just, yeah, just shoot this thing straight up. That's all we need. Get our height, and then we just decouple those engine sections. Now it's a glider, and we will just glide the rest of the way back to the runway. Now, looking again forward to what we're going to do in the rest of this is we're going to send a craft to EVE and I've had a lot of fun with the ScanSat mod looking for different anomalies and stuff like that which we did in the last mission. We're going to pick up a, I think a couple more ScanSat contracts for EVE and then I'd like to start exploring the surface of EVE and for me EVE is it just seems like whenever I go to EVE, something goes wrong. Like, usually it's the entry into EVE, just, I, I was struggling with Kraken attacks, like my craft would get into some weird spin and just go faster and faster and faster, and I, I couldn't stop it, and it would just fling itself apart. So here's one, our contract to land on EVE. We don't have to land and return, this is just a landing. And then we have another one, this is a multi-spectral scan, so we need to do three different kinds of scans, so we need to make sure we have the right science parts for those missions. Now, let's go build our lander. Now, there's a lot to do on EVE, there's actually quite a bit to explore, and a lot of science points. EVE's surface has one of the highest science multipliers anywhere in the Kerbal system, so we can really fill out our tech tree by even just sending a lander there. Well, rather than sending a rover to some place like Duna, Eve has this weird liquid surface covering a lot of it. So to get around, I thought I'd build a quadcopter. Now, NASA sent an aircraft to Mars recently, and that was kind of cool with their Ingenuity uh, copter there. And I have a tutorial on how to build a coaxial helicopter like Ingenuity if you're ever interested in something like that. But right now, I'm going to build a quadcopter, mostly for stability reasons. EVE has a very soupy atmosphere, which makes it actually kind of a good atmosphere to fly around in. Now, I'm going to put... These antennas are a little better for handling aerodynamic stresses. That's why I'm using them. And I'm going to use four... I found that 
the with the way the antenna multiplier works, which is not just um, two antennas is twice as strong. It, you can check out the wiki for how that works. But anyway, the four antennas help me maintain contact with my relay satellites overhead. So that's why I did that. I'm going to use these grip pads to act as kind of my landing gear and just make sure it's well situated. Um, so I'm going to add some struts here just to help keep it balanced. Help. It's going to take a few shocks there. With that set up, let's start getting our rotors figured out. Uh, I, I do end up needing to increase the rotor power just a little bit. The, the really soupy atmosphere, the motors were having a hard time actually spinning the propeller blades there with that. This is a little bit of reaction control wheels. The way the game handles the sick and collective isn't always the way I want it to, and I was having some difficulty getting adequate yaw control. It was actually more like the yaw was reversed and that was really throwing me off. Like it had yaw control. Anyway, I put a little reacting control wheel on this thing and I have no problem with yaw pitch and roll. But one thing I am going to do here is I'm going to have two blades be clockwise rotation and two blades be counterclockwise rotation and that will help keep the craft stable um, otherwise it will want to spin if you use all the same direction so they'll counteract each other's torque. Now once I put those in I need to make sure my center of mass and my center of the lift produced by the fans is, is lined up so I'm going to be moving the fans and some of the mass around here to make sure that's exactly where I need it and that's, that's pretty close that's all we need um, with the reaction wheels pretty close will be fine. This little decoupler here is going to be how we detach the craft from the rocket that's going to take it there. Put some struts on here. Boy, with Eve, just struts seem to be something that is a huge help. Now you see I'm actually tilting these fan shrouds, which is tilting the rotors in there. By doing that, uh, if they were all the same angle, if they were all flat, you don't get yaw control. By tilting a little bit, I do end up getting some yaw control out of those blades, so that's helpful that way. That's why I did that way. Matter of fact, because I tilted them um, almost like with a dihedral angle, the craft has a natural stability, so if it's like falling through the eaves atmosphere, it will naturally want to be right side up. I put a parachute, don't think I really need it, but just to be on the safe side, I added a parachute on this thing so I know it will fall properly. Now I use that big heat shield to really slow the craft down and protect it because you're going to be coming into Eve's atmosphere over 3,000 meters per second and, and that's just from a low orbit there. That's not coming from interplanetary speeds or anything like that. Lots of relay dishes. This isn't so much for my connection back to Kerbin. It's just so that those weak antennas on our quadcopter will be able to connect. This is the ScanSat parts. I'm going to attach them and I need to make sure, I'm looking over, make sure I get the right ones that will fill the contract. In this case, I need to have ones that do three different types of low resolution scans and I find them. Lots of solar panels. Some of these scans take a lot of power, so I just wanted to make sure I had plenty of solar power so the scans don't have any issues and we'll have to quit. It should just make the scans go a little faster. Some extra batteries, some extra solar panels. I just want to make sure I'm in really good shape. Eve, with being so much closer to the sun than definitely Duna and even with Kerbin, solar panels are actually more effective. And you can look at, I think, the wiki and see exactly how much more effective they are at different distances from the sun, which is quite interesting if you ever want to look at that. Like going out to Elu, sometimes solar panels are about like 4% of the effectiveness as they would be on Kerbin. So, you know, that's why you might not use solar panels that far out. I'm actually setting up the Cal 1000 here, making sure I got it all correct. If you've seen my quadcopter tutorial or any of my uh, propeller tutorials, none of that will look odd to you. Now I need a big booster to get this most of the way into orbit. I'm trying to get around 3000 meters per second of delta V out of this booster section and then that upper stage will do 
the rest of the work, it's got over 3,000 meters per second in the upper stage, which will be plenty to transfer from Kerbin's orbit and get into a low orbit around EVE, and probably some extra. If I continue to do missions around EVE, I'll probably want to adjust the orbit of my satellites around there to have better coverage. Right now, I need to think about how high the satellites need to be for their ScanSat coverage, and, but then once I'm just using them as relays, I will adjust accordingly. I used the in-game tool now for the uh, transfer calculator and for the in-game alarm. I tried some of it last time and it didn't work as well as I wanted for my Duna mission. It worked fine. In this case, it actually is great. It got me a very low cost as far as Delta V over to EVE, and I, I'm not going to have any issues. It gets me an EVE encounter right off the bat here. So the transfer calculator tool in the game, I really like it. And then I'll make a mid-course correction, which is not going to be a very expensive burn, but I want to ensure I have a low polar orbit. So that's what I am just setting up here and my ScanSat are going to be ideally around 100 kilometers above the surface, so that's why I'm setting up the exact orbit I am. And that looks pretty good. Now, I actually only am able to do two missions for this particular playthrough. It was another very busy week on the farm, and next week also looks like another busy week. I, I try to get as much in as I can, and definitely with EVE missions, this took a lot of practice and prep to make sure I knew what I was going to build. Just, I don't know, something about EVE, I, I don't think I have it down as well as I would like, specifically entry on EVE. I just, something always goes wrong. However, I did enough practice that actually what you're seeing here is my first take, nothing goes wrong. And that was such a relief, although it took quite a few hours, three, four hours of testing and, and practicing to make sure I'd have a craft that would get it right. Anyway, that's what we got right now. Our craft is now in low orbit. Now, my two relays are actually in slightly different orbits and different orbital altitudes. And I want to time this so that higher, slower orbit one is going to be behind my current orbit, so when I decouple the lander, it will be connected to its initial relay, and then when that first relay gets too far beyond, that the second relay will be coming around and I'll have connection as this thing comes in close to the surface. Because this craft, with the way it's designed, I need a connection to the curb net there in order to fly with the rotors. If I don't have the curb net access, all I can do is max throttle or minimum throttle, which means uh, the max collective or min collective there with the rotors. This big inflatable heat shield for this small of craft, maybe overkill, but it did a wonderful job of just slowing this thing down and just landing this thing very safely. Other times when I was practicing trying to use this, I found if I wasn't perfectly balanced in the middle of this heat shield, it would get tilted and start to spin, and I would get a weird crack in effect that this thing would be spinning at some kind of ungodly speed, and there was no hope of recovering the craft. In this case, we are coming down gently, we are coming down smooth, I'm going to be able to deploy the parachute. I don't even really need it, but it just helps ensure that the inflatable heat shield drops and this thing is even traveling slower than that. Um, probably should decouple the parachute already at this point. I, I don't. I start the rotors and there is a island there kind of in front of us if we head mostly south. So that's where I want to go and just start exploring. We'll go ahead and gather science here on this thing. And that's the island I want to go to. These things are not fast, so I would probably cut out the trip. Just, it's a long, slow trip on rotors. So I'll decouple this parachute and fly over there, and I'll see you there after the cutout. Just 
<laughs> it's a long, slow flight. It's, a, it's an effective means to get around on Eve. It's just not a fast means. And this craft, well, it really a lot of fun. Eve's atmosphere, I mean, it's so soupy. You can do quite a bit. And here's, I, I lost connection, so I had to, I could just use the maximum throttle or the minimum throttle. I mean, the, the craft's still all right. I'm not gonna lose it or anything. I just have to make sure I have access to the satellites as I kind of fly this thing. So we're all right. Hit lands, all right. And there we go. Let's take this thing over to an anomaly. I see one over here. That should be kind of fun. Let's check it out. Now, this thing is not overly easy to fly, and so I was struggling a little bit to land with precision, but it was still a lot of fun. See, I've got the scanning on here, and we'll just go ahead and get close. Uh, sometimes I will actually use my joystick to fly. I, I'm not doing that right now. I'm trying to do this with just a keyboard, but I got close enough. Hey, there we go. We're gonna get lots of science here from Eve, and maybe come back and use this lander and get more stuff. A lot of fun, I've, I've enjoyed this lander. Let me know what you think of my designs. If you're enjoying this series, uh, be sure to remember to leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you aren't to make sure you catch up on my future content here as I post weekly. There we go. Hey, this was a lot of fun with this craft and we'll just transmit this science and we'll have lots of science points to spend. I'm not sure what we're gonna spend them on. If you have any ideas, be sure to leave them in the comments. I am Echo3. I will see you next time.